In today's video, we're gonna go into the science on whether drinking diet soda is safe for people with type 2 diabetes. I'm Diana, a registered dietitian and a certified diabetes care and education specialist. I have a strong family history of type 2 diabetes and I'm on a mission to prevent it from developing. And I'm sharing what I learned along the way. Before we dive into diet soda, let's start with sugary sweetened beverages. It's well established that drinking sugary sweetened beverages, things like soda, fruit punch, sports drinks, energy drinks, sweetened teas, contribute to the risk of type 2 diabetes. Even just one to two servings of sugary sweetened beverages daily increases your risk of type 2 diabetes. In one meta-analysis of over a million participants, the researchers found that those who drank the most sugary sweetened beverages had a 27% greater increase of developing type 2 diabetes than those who consumed the least. So sugary sweetened beverages also contribute to weight gain. The more sugary beverages you drink, the more weight you tend to gain. Why? Well, they contribute a very high caloric intake. They contain a lot of sugar, a lot of carbohydrates with not a lot of nutrients. So when you drink these sugary beverages, you're just drinking pure sugar with no nutrition. So research clearly shows a link between drinking sugary drinks and increasing your risk of type 2 diabetes. So if you are drinking sugary drinks like soda, switching to diet soda is a step in the right direction. Why? Because you're eliminating a huge source of calories and sugar from your diet. There are some studies that do suggest that these artificially sweetened beverages can be a healthier alternative than sugary sweetened beverages and lower your risk of type 2 diabetes. Additionally, there's also some research that shows when people switch to these artificially sweetened beverages, they do tend to lose weight, which makes sense because again, you're lowering the amount of calories and sugar that you're consuming. One meta-analysis found that drinking low or no calorie beverages in place of sugary sweetened beverages was associated with weight loss and a reduced risk of obesity. So if you do drink regular soda, switching to diet soda is a step in the right direction. But what if you don't drink diet soda at all? Well, the research shows that it's not best to start. It actually shows that long-term consumption of diet soda can actually increase your risk of type 2 diabetes. In that meta-analysis of over 1 million people, the researchers found that those who drank the most artificially sweetened beverages actually had a 32% greater chance of developing type 2 diabetes than those who drank the least amount. The studies included in that meta-analysis followed the participants from 2 to 20 years, showing us that years-long Diet soda drinking can contribute to the risk of type 2 diabetes. Additional studies also suggest that the long-term consumption of diet soda may also increase your risk of type 2 diabetes. One cohort study that followed people for seven years found that those who drank one or more diet sodas a day was associated with a 67% increased risk than those who drank no diet soda. And in an analysis of three cohort studies, the researchers found that drinking more than one diet soda a week was also associated with an increased risk of type 2 diabetes. Drinking a diet soda every once in a while is totally fine, but the long-term consistent consumption of diet soda may be problematic and may increase your risk of developing type 2 diabetes. What about diet soda and weight gain? So research is pretty mixed and it's evolving on whether diet soda does contribute to weight gain. Some researchers argue that diet soda increases your appetite, causing you to eat more food, thus more calories, and thus leading to weight gain. Another theory is that people who drink diet soda may be reaching for other sources of sugar to compensate for the lack of satiety and satiation with drinking diet soda. So with any research, there's always going to be some limitations of the data. So a significant amount of the research linking diet soda and type 2 diabetes comes from observational studies. While observational studies can demonstrate associations, they cannot demonstrate cause. So they cannot explain if diet soda causes type 2 diabetes. So a link may exist between diet soda and type 2 diabetes, but other factors such as dietary habits like food preferences, changes to satiety, and the individual's risk of type 2 diabetes all likely mediate the relationship between type 2 diabetes and diet soda. So what is the best drink for people with type 2 diabetes? Well, you guessed it. Yes, it's water. Drinking water instead of sugary sweetened beverages is associated with a lower weight and with a lower risk of type 2 diabetes. And water is superior to low or no calorie sweetened beverages when we're talking about type 2 diabetes outcomes. One meta-analysis found that drinking water in place of sugary sweetened beverages was associated with a lower occurrence of type 2 diabetes compared to swapping sugary sweetened beverages for low or no calorie beverages. And another meta-analysis of randomized control trials found that water was more effective at lowering A1C 
than low or no calorie sweetened beverages. Okay, so what are some good alternatives to soda or diet soda? So of course, water is gonna be the best choice. It has no calories, no sugar, and it helps contribute to overall hydration. If you want something a little bit more flavorful, you can try herbal or fruit infused water. You can add a few slices of fresh fruit like lemon, lime, or even berries to your water or herbs like mint or basil. And this can enhance the flavor without significantly adding calories or sugar. Unsweetened teas is another really great option. They offer so many health benefits without sugar or calories. Just be cautious with the sweetened ones because those do contain a lot of sugar and will contribute a lot of calories to your diet. And lastly, sparkling water is another great option, especially if you want something fizzy. Just look for unsweetened or naturally flavored options. And just to reiterate, if you do drink regular soda, switching to diet soda is a good stepping stone because of how much strong research there are linking sugary beverages to type 2 diabetes and to weight gain. However, research does show us that the long-term consumption of diet soda can also potentially increase our type 2 diabetes risk. So while diet soda is a good stepping stone, it should just be that, a stepping stone. So if you're hooked on diet soda, here are some tips to help you reduce your consumption. Number one, set a goal. Determine how many diet sodas you drink in a day or in a week and determine a goal of how many you want to reduce. Number two, identify triggers. So pay attention to the situations or emotions that cause you to reach for a diet soda. Gradually decreasing your intake of diet soda instead of just quitting cold turkey can make the transition a lot easier. So pay attention to the situations or emotions that cause you to reach for a diet soda. It could be stress, boredom, or certain social situations. Identifying these triggers can help you find alternative strategies to cope or address those situations without relying on diet soda. Number three, find alternatives. Explore other beverage options like the ones I just mentioned. You may find that these alternatives will satisfy your cravings. Number four is to stay hydrated. Often people turn to diet soda to quench their thirst. Ensure that you're drinking enough water throughout the day to stay hydrated. Carry a reusable water bottle with you as a reminder to drink water throughout the day. Remember, reducing your diet soda intake should be gradual and be patient with yourself. Celebrate small victories along the way and focus on the positive changes that you're making to your overall health. If you liked this video, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to our channel.